11.9 is, so we're still in vectors and we're gonna look at a dot product operation. This is not to be confused with the scalar product, which is what uh, we used in the last section. So again, the scalar product, not what we're doing now, but this is the last section. We took a vector, so we had some vector, just say it's in two dimensions and a real number scalar. So we looked at the a times v, or alpha times v, and this works just like distribution. So that was last section, scalar product. Now we're gonna look at a different type of product. So the dot product is a product operation that is between two vectors. So that scalar product was between a vector and a scalar. This dot product is gonna be between two vectors. So we'll have two vectors, I'll call them V1 and V2. So we'll take V1, A1, uh, B1, and V2 will be A2, B2. So dot product, the notation, we actually use a dot this time. And I like to make the dot a little extra bold. It would probably suffice to just have a dot like that. But what I don't wanna do is think the dot is over there, making the one into an I. So what I do with the dot is just make it really painfully obvious. So I use a really big dot. So what is a dot product? Well, it is defined to be multiplication on one coordinate at a time. So this dot product, uh, and when you multiply, uh, after you multiply, you add the results. So we get A1 times A2 plus B1 times B2. So it's the sum of the products of each coordinate pair. So you got the X's multiplied together, and then you multiply the Y's together right here, and then you add that result. So this is the definition of a dot product. If we're in uh, three dimensions, we would have V1 will be A1, B1, C1. Sometimes it's extra annoying to write commas. If you can get away with not writing commas, it's okay to sometimes skip them. Let me show you a really bad time to skip writing commas. Let's say you're dealing with a vector that is, for example, 3, 12, 32. Well, as I said it, I understood there was three coordinates. A 3 was the first coordinate, 12 was the second, 32 was the third coordinate. If you have commas in here, it's very obvious. Oh, the first coordinate is 3, the next coordinate is 12, the last coordinate is 32. The problem is if you don't have commas, Maybe this will be interpreted as two dimensions and this entire uh, one, two, three, two, somebody might think that's the Y coordinate. So this would be a bad time to not use commas because I wanna make sure that it's obvious there's three coordinates here. Uh, if there's only one digit in each coordinate, it's a little more obvious. You don't necessarily need commas then. The other way to uh, skip using commas is if you're really careful with your spacing. So for example, like this would be okay because I left enough space in between that it's pretty obvious what is what. So I'm gonna try to write commas every single time, but if you're working and doing some scratch work and you wanna avoid writing commas, it's okay. Uh, but just make sure on a midterm that I can see the commas. All right, so we're gonna do a dot product, v1 dot v2, and it's exact, exactly like it was before. We're gonna multiply the a, the first coordinate, a1 times a2, and then v1 times v2, 
and then C1 times C2, and then add them together. So that's the dot product. So do a really quick example. There's really not much to computing this. So I'm writing an ij notation, or ijk if you have three dimensions. So you could do this in ij notation. I personally like diamond bracket, so I'm going to go ahead and just switch right over to diamond bracket. And then do my dot product in this notation. So two times four plus negative three times six. That'll be eight, three times six, 18. So that's negative 18, and we're gonna get 10 here. So that is the dot product of those two vectors. It's a little bit strange that the dot product takes two vectors and gives you a number. Uh, the scalar product was a bit different. The scalar product took a scalar and a vector, and it gave us a vector at the end. And we're gonna do another product in the next section that'll give us something different at the end as well. So we'll do a few more computations here. Do one more dot product with the same values. We're just gonna reverse the order. So I'm gonna compute this dot product. 4 times 2, plus 6 times negative 3, and we get negative 10. Good thing I did this, because I just caught the mistake up here. It should be negative 10 as well. Now, it doesn't matter what order you do your dot product, you'll get the same value. So this is what we call the commutative property. So you can do a dot product either order, you get the same thing. So it's commutative property. And we're gonna look at a couple other properties. So why in the world do we call it the uh, product. So what does it take to make something a product? Basically it distributes across addition. So here are some more properties. So we just looked at the community property. So I just talked about the product distributing across addition. So the way this product works is it's going to distribute. So u times or u dot product with uh, v plus w, you're going to distribute your u. Just like you would before. The only difference is there's dot happening. So if this was just with numbers, it would look just like this. But we're putting a dot in between everything. So this is what the distributive property looks like with dot products. And what happens if you take a vector and do a dot product with itself? Well, what you're gonna get is the magnitude squared. So if you do a dot product with yourself, you get the magnitude squared. And what happens when you take the zero vector dot with any other vector now what is a zero vector? Of course a zero vector is just a bunch of zeros. Let's say it's two dimensions. Dot some other vector AB. Well if you start computing this, zero times A is zero. Zero times B is zero. And you're going to get zero as your dot product. So when you take zero, the zero vector dot with any vector, you're going to get the number zero. So again this is the zero vector and this is the number.
zero. And the way I distinguish them, I make that zero vector and make sure that it's very bold. So go over it you know, two or three times so it looks really obviously not like a zero. So it looks like a zero vector. So let's do an example to see why this dot product with itself is the magnitude squared. So we'll take, let's go to three dimensions. I'll we'll choose one, two, three. I'm not feeling terribly creative at the moment. So we're going to compute the magnitude of this vector, and then we're going to take a dot product with itself. Uh, actually, I want to get magnitude squared. So the magnitude is the square root of the x-coordinate squared plus y-coordinate squared plus z-coordinate squared. And we're squaring this, so it's this whole thing squared. What does squaring do? Squaring basically cancels the square root. So we got 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared. Yeah, I could. this is 14, but this is good enough. I'm going to leave it in this form. So there is the magnitude squared of the vector v. So let's compute v dot v now. This is a great time to not use commas. All right, multiply x coordinates. So we got one times one plus y coordinates, two times two plus z coordinates, three times three. And we might as well write this as one squared, two squared, three squared. And that's exactly the same that we got with the magnitude squared. So the dot product of a vector with itself is the square of the magnitude. So we're going to now look at a property that um, uses the law of cosines. So I'm going to uh, skip the proof of uh, why this is true. So we have the uh, cosine theta equals u dot v over magnitude u times the magnitude of v. And what in the world's theta, u, and v? Well, u and v are vectors. So let's say that's u, and that vector is v. And theta is the angle between the two vectors. Now, in two dimensions, it's pretty easy to visualize this. Your vectors are written on paper. They're in a two-dimensional paper or a two-dimensional plane. If they're in three dimensions, they don't necessarily have to be, you don't have to imagine them flat on a table. Just think of two arrows that obviously need to be touching at the beginning. No matter where they're pointing, you, there's an angle between them. And you can measure that angle, and that is the angle we're referring to here. So this even works in three dimensions. Uh, this has something, this is a property in four dimensions, but you can't really visualize it, so it's not worth going into um, what it would mean in four dimensions. But it definitely pretty easy to visualize in two dimensions. I just drew it for you. And in three dimensions, the U and the V don't have to be on the same, uh, on the plane. Just think of your first and second finger and you know, point them in any direction, any two directions you want, no matter where you point them, there is an angle between them, and that could be measured. So we're going to go ahead and compute an angle between two vectors using this formula. So first of all, how many dimensions are we in here? 
it looks like we're in two dimensions, but really we're in three dimensions. So if you want to be complete, you could write plus zero K, just so we remember we're in three dimensions. Uh, what I like to do instead of that is I like diamond notation. So I'm going to write these two vectors in diamond notation. And when I write them in diamond notation, uh, I want to make sure they have the same, uh, they're in the same dimension. So I need to make sure I'm using three coordinates here. So this is the vector u in diamond notation, and the vector v in diamond notation is 1, 1, 2. All right, compute the angle between. Well, the only thing I know about angles and vectors really is this cos theta equals u dot v. So I'm going to write that down over magnitude u magnitude v. So eventually, we're going to solve for theta. But at the beginning, let's just go ahead and compute the u right side here. So I'm going diamond notation, 4, negative 3, 0 dot one one two and this is divided by the magnitude of u which is square root four squared plus three squared plus zero squared and that is multiplied by the magnitude of v one squared plus one squared plus two squared so in the numerator the dot product four times a one plus negative 3 times 1 plus 0 times 2 divided by, now I am going to compute the actual values of these, 4 squared is 16 plus 9 is 25, and the second magnitude 1 plus 1 plus 4 is 6, so we have 4 minus 3 divided by, square root 25 is 5, square root 6. Uh, actually, I want to keep writing this vertically. All right, so what in the world is this? Well, let's look where we started. This thing that we're looking at is cosine of theta. So how do we solve for theta? We have to get the cosine out of here. Well, we're going to use the inverse cosine function. So we're going to move the cosine to the other side with the cos inverse function. And this is all there. I don't know what uh, angle has a cosine value of this weird fraction. Nothing like anything we've seen. So the good news is you just leave your answer like this. We don't know an angle that has that cosine value. So we're done right here. And of course, if you're on web work, You have arc cos of this number. So that would be your web arc answer. You have to use arc cos. And that is it right there.